With the racing season here in the UAE upon us, I thought who better than the race caller to provide some valuable insight into the race courses here in the country. That race caller is Pat Comerford. Pat, at Abu Dhabi, do they race on both the dirt and the turf? No, it's only a turf surface. Um, there's a, a golf course restricting the ability to race on the dirt. There is a, a dirt surface on the inside, but it's only used for training purposes. Uh, all the racing is done on the turf track. It's a, a 2,000 metre track from, uh, from finish post to finish post. Does the rail move often? It does. Uh, two positions uh, they have uh, for movement. We'll see it go out to a, a three metre position or a six metre position throughout the season. Uh, again, if they do have big days coming up on the card for some of the feature meetings, you'll see that rail come out there just to protect that inside ground for those feature days. Okay, what are some of those feature days at Abu Dhabi? Yeah, some big races. Uh, the Jewel Crown worth 5 million dirham. Uh, it's uh, an Arabian race that attracts uh, many from, from all over the world. We get a, a big influx of horses from Europe who make their way in for that race. And at the back of the season as well, the President's Cup is also uh, a big feature race there. Also for the Arabians, um, I think uh, millions and millions of dirham are basically raced for throughout the season. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a uh, draws in a, a decent enough crowd. And barriers, are they as crucial at Abu Dhabi as well? It's a, it's a hard one. I associate Abu Dhabi not so much in how it's built, but also how they race, very similar to Mooney Valley in the fact that the uh, the race is consistently unfolding through the, through the entirety of the race in regards to getting riders getting their horse in a position to be attacking at the corner and not in those final stages. It's only a very small straight. I mean, 300 metres, it's the same size as, you know, a provincial track in Australia for, for run-in. So you need to be having that momentum and be, I guess, in clear air and making sure that you're giving yourself the best chance as they swing for home. So they can't make much ground from the back at no, they, they can't really. It's you find that a couple of jockeys will occasionally, if they do get caught back, will, I guess, stick to the running rail and hope to see horses fanned so that they can cut up underneath. But with a big field of horses, it's very, very hard. And uh, you'll find that if you do uh, see runners taking off at the six or 700 metre mark to try and get themselves into a forward spot, if you're eight, nine deep at Abu Dhabi, it's almost impossible to win a race. You, you have, you're covering so much extra ground. So. Um, yeah, it pays to, be, uh, pays to be in a forward spot and, and in clear air as well. Two trainers worth following, Ernst Ortel, who trains for uh, Khalid El Nabuda. Uh, he's had a, a very good history at Abu Dhabi in recent seasons. Uh, Ty Gauthier is, is his main rider for, for all his uh, Arabians that he does put out on the track, so uh, certainly a partnership worth following. Bernardo Pinero's also set up a, a nice uh, association with Majid Al Jahuri as well. So uh, if those two are partnering up with one horse at Abu Dhabi, it, it certainly pays to follow as well. And Pat, how about the track at Jebel Ali? Yeah, it's, a, it's one of our more interesting surfaces by just how it's built and, and how it races as well. Uh, it's a track that I'm sure plenty of people will be tuning into over the, the coming months with obviously Michael Costa, the Australian trainer, having his third season here training for His Highness Sheikh Ahmed and uh, what a wonderful year they had last year, only just getting beaten in the Premiership and uh, they'll be making a good bid for it again this year but the Yellow and Black Army are pretty hard to stop on their home surface where they train as well. And it's just dirt racing there. Just dirt racing and unique in, in the fact that uh, it's not uh, a track that, that meets, uh, it's not a circle, uh, it's, it's more of a horseshoe. Uh, to access the 1800 and 2000 metre mark, they actually have to travel down and work their way through a centre track on the course to get over to the back part. Um, that's a, a unique aspect. A thousand, uh, 1400 metres straight, uh, the course proper turns at the thousand as well, so it's a long way uh, down the straight uh, to the finishing post and not only that followed by a, a, the final 400 metres being a very very steep climb uh, for the final two furlongs up to the finishing post so that can expose a few late in the race. So that means it's quite a quirky track for sure. Are barriers crucial there? I don't think barriers are crucial at Jebel Ali. It's again it's about uh, how your horse is travelling and keeping that horse as comfortable as possible. You'll find that it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're out in front or whether you're in behind. You just want to be in that spot where your horse races best. And 
if that happens, you can rest assured that your horse is going to have the best chance once they get to that 400 metre mark to have that extra effort to run up the hill because uh, you'll find that they'll go from travelling very well and from 400 metres onwards after they start to climb, you'll see many horses fall away. It's, uh, it's not the most ideal thing to have on the back end of a race for a horse that's uh, you know, already done quite a bit of work to get there by that point. But that's why the locals reign supreme. Michael trains these horses up the hill on a regular basis. So the locals get the best advantage here and, and you'll see from stats in recent years, um, it, it, it pays to be on board uh, the horses there trained locally. They didn't have a good season in, in recent years. Michael's really started to figure out and I guess work the equation out of how to really get the best out of his horses and utilize that home ground advantage. And um, I think they're gonna make a real good bid for the, the premiership this year. So uh, it pays to follow him and, and Ben Cohen, who will be the number one rider there for the season returning this year. Down and settled. Starter likes them and sends them on their way. Tell us a bit about the Alain racetrack. Yeah, it's our furthest track in regards to how far we have to travel, around an hour and 40 from Dubai, and uh, for those coming from Abu Dhabi, slightly shorter, around an hour and 15 to an hour and 20. It's over near the Oman border, and uh, it's been a, a nice training facility for most namely quite a few French trainers who have made Alain their home in, in recent years. I speak of Jean-Claude Bacout and, and also uh, Eric Lamartinel. Uh, who trained for uh, quite heavily for the El Wathpa camp. So um, you'll see a lot of El Wathpa horses going around at, uh, at Alain uh, over the upcoming season. And uh, those local horses do have quite the advantage. I mean, it is, uh, you know, it's a float trip for a lot of horses. So um, those, uh, those French trainers, when they, uh, when they do get a horse out on the track, it's, uh, it's certainly uh, one that uh, is worth uh, paying extra attention to. And are they dirt or turf? Uh, dirt racing. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's got a straight thousand metre track, but uh, around the surface, I guess, for, as a whole, it, it probably sits at around sort of 2,000 to 2,200 metres. Uh, it's, it's actually quite a long run in it. It's around sort of 450 to 500 metres from the, the top turn on the, on the uh, course proper to the finishing line. So um, although you are on the dirt, unlike Abu Dhabi, you have a lot of time uh, from the corner to, to be making ground. And I think it pays to just make sure your horse is traveling and, and save them up for, for that final effort down the straight where um, I guess they'll really fan across the track. And as I said, you've got plenty of time to get to the lead. So if you're punting at Elaine, you want to see your horse near the front of the pack? Yeah, look, if your horse isn't in front of Elaine, you'd want to see it travelling in the back half of the field. I mean, it's uh, if you're off the bit from the six or 700 metre mark, you're going to be beaten quite a long way. So um, it's about, if you can't find the front, saving that horse up for that final effort there in that final 400 metres. So if your horse is travelling, you're doing quite well. Any quirks? Uh, down the straight, uh, it's, it certainly pays to be over on the near side running rail, so uh, it, it seems to be the, the place where a lot of the horses have been making ground in the last couple of seasons. So um, for the straight racing, you'd be hoping to see them as close to the camera as possible. Okay, so that's the outside, what the we outside, refer to as the outside. The outside running rail, yes, correct. Perfect. And you touched on the French trainers, so that'd be the trainers to follow LA. Yeah, I'd say so. I, I'd say Jean-Claude Bacout has, uh, has a, a good record there more so Eric Lamartinel. Um, he's got a, a decent team of horses at the moment. Uh, Jules Mobian will be his main rider there for the upcoming season, uh, who's a uh, French jockey, uh, who's made his way over here uh, last season as well and was riding for Eric then. Um, another trainer as well you'd keep a close eye on, he can release a smart one every now and then, and that's the trainer for Alice Sale in Dennis O'Brien. Um, he has brought some nice horses over the journey to our lane and uh, last season we saw some of his horses win by some considerable margins. Okay, jockey to follow at Elaine? Uh, jockey to follow at Elaine, I'd say, well, Jules Moby and hopefully we'll have a, a good season there uh, getting on board the, uh, the local horses. Um, Richie Mullen uh, has been a great uh, rider for, for Dennis O'Brien over the journey. So if he's uh, making the trip down to, uh, to Elaine for, for Dennis, uh, certainly uh, give it some attention. So Pat, talk to me, there are a couple of tracks at Maidan. Mm -hmm. There are. Uh, the dirt track is our main surface. It's home to our biggest race, the Dubai World Cup for 12 million USD. It's a big purse and uh, it has always been the racing that's been at the forefront of, of people here in the Middle East. Dirt racing, it's what they hold closest to their heart. 
We run on the turf here as well. Uh, it's a 2400 metre uh, track around. Uh, we also have a, a straight six. Uh, it's, a, it's a big surface as well, but uh, both surfaces are in full use uh, throughout the season here at Maidan. So when the turf is being used, does the rail move around like it does in Australia? Yeah, we have uh, about five or six rail positions on the turf track. We get out to uh, as far as sort of 15 or 16 metres. Um, that seems to be our limit, but uh, they go out in three metre increments. Uh, uh, the rail stays true on the dirt. Here at Maidan, are barriers crucial? Yeah, they are. Uh, barriers are everything, especially in the middle distance dirt races. If you're drawn outside of eight, it's going to be very hard for you to find a spot as it is hustle and bustle racing from, from the moment the gates open. I think with the sprints and with the distance racing, it's a little less uh, of, a, of a major issue for people. Um, but uh, look, I think it pays to be in front, so uh, you'll be using your gate to try and find a forward spot regardless. As for the turf, apart from the 1400 metres, it doesn't really uh, seem to be too much of an issue. We have a long back straight and a long front straight. Uh, the rail doesn't move for a, quite a while, so it allows horses to find their rhythm and uh, it becomes more of a tactical game uh, in regards to, I guess, pace as opposed to what barrier you've drawn. So in that case, track bias is the one that made up? Yeah, slight leaders bias, more so on the dirt than on the turf. Uh, the, the dirt, as it's just the style of racing, wanting to be up in front and, and obviously the kickback that uh, is associated with, uh, with dirt racing, uh, it pays to be in front. There's a slight bias towards them there. As for the, uh, the turf, it plays a lot more even, but depending on the night, you know, we can see, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how runners go. I mean, the straight, uh, it's paid to be over be on, the, uh, on the far side rail as opposed to the stand side in recent years. So for straight six racing, uh, you'd, you'd want to be getting over to, the, uh, to the, the, the true rail over on the far side. How about trainers for courses? We know horses for courses. What about trainers for courses here at Maidan? Who would be most successful? Well, Charlie Appleby and, and Godolphin have, have established themselves as a, a pretty tidy outfit, especially on the grass in recent years. Um, it, it pays to follow the Royal Blue on the grass. You won't see them too often on the dirt, though, and that's where you know, you'll see trainers like Bupat Seema, who was our uh, champion trainer last year and, and the winner of the Dubai World Cup with Laurel River. Uh, look, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go again this season, but I think if you follow Bupat Seema on the dirt and Charlie Appleby on the grass, you, uh, you won't be too far from it. Jockey to follow this season at Maidan. Well, William Buick, when he flies into town for Charlie Appleby and, and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, it, uh, it really is a, a partnership that you've got to give plenty of respect to. Um, I think those two trainers, their main riders, uh, Bupat Seema and, and Charlie Appleby, both use William Buick and Tygo Shea. They, they were our two, uh, I guess, major faces and the ones we saw in the winners list our most winningest jockeys here at Maidan last season. So um, I think if they can come off uh, into this season with the, uh, the, I guess, the rhythm that they had from last year and that momentum, um, they'll be winning a fair few races again this season.